Hi there and welcome to the first in our lesson on networks which will help you when you come to do revision. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to walk you through step by step some of the transmission media and some of the different types of cable that you are likely to use if you are creating a network. Now the objective that I want you to get from this presentation is that you learn the benefits of using a network and that you're able to identify the transmission media available. So we're going to talk about copper cable today. We're going to talk about unshielded twisted pair. We're going to talk about fiber optic and you need to know the difference and why you might use that in different situations. Hopefully this video reminds you ready for your exam. There are some videos in here I've taken from other YouTube channels and I have reference them at the bottom. So what is the difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet? Many people don't know the difference. Well, the Internet is actually a group of interconnected networks. So your network at home can be connected to your friend's network that is all the way over on the other side of the town because your router allows that to connect. Now, the World Wide Web is a group of pages that are stored on servers. It's a service that is provided by the Internet. So you can't access these servers with the pages on it unless you have the Internet. So just a quick summary. The Internet is a series of interconnected networks. I have highlighted this to remind you. The World Wide Web, again, is a collection of pages stored on these web servers and it's a service provided by the Internet. Just like there are many services that the internet provides, such as email, FTP, social media, and there's some things that will come up in an exam situation. Right now, you're about to watch a video that will show you how networks work. And it's a short video, and hopefully it helps you understand why we need them a bit more. If you think about it, we are surrounded by networks. For example, when you step off the curb and onto the street, you're suddenly connected to a huge network that goes almost everywhere. But roads are only one example. Behind the walls of our homes, there are wires that connect and give our home electricity. And a type of network that we rely on more each year is the computer network. Let's take a closer look. We'll start small. If you use a wireless internet connection in your home, it's a kind of network. But the real power of networks comes when multiple computers connect and communicate. Think about a small office. Everyone has a computer with information on it. Alone, a computer is powerful, but as part of a network in an office, it can share information with all the other computers. This is called a local area network, or LAN. Here, each computer or device is a node, and the links between them are connections, and every network is different. Some computers on the network may connect to a single cable. Others connect to each other to share information. But the most common network these days uses a single resource as the hub for all the connections. And for these nodes and connections to work, they need rules. Consider our street example. To keep traffic moving, everyone needs to obey the speed limit and go at green lights. In computer networks, the rules that help computers talk to each other are called protocols, and they allow networks to connect to other networks, even over phone or cable lines that cover huge areas. For example, multiple business or university networks can connect and communicate just like office computers. Extend this idea further, and the network becomes the Internet, a worldwide resource with nodes, connections, and protocols that keep traffic moving. This means when you connect to the Internet, your computer becomes a node on the network and has access to millions of other nodes around the world. Each new web page you visit comes from a specific node on the network that's designed to communicate with your computer and every other computer on the network. It's a network of networks. So, you can see that networks are everywhere and they all have a lot in common. These days, whether you're on the road or online, the question is, where is your next destination? So, the things that you need to be able to actually talk about when it comes to why you need a network is that you need to be able to actually say that files can be shared easily through work groups, 
So you can set up a work group of classmates or teachers that only these people can access those files. You can communicate via email. If we didn't have a network, if we didn't have the internet, we wouldn't be able to communicate through email, let alone phone calls. You're able to share files with each other, so I can send a file to my head teacher, to my best friend, uh, to, to my mother. I might want to send a picture. So that these are some of the benefits to having a network. What it means by sharing peripheral devices is if you've got a printer in your room, have a look around your IT room at school. You don't have one printer per computer. You have one that you can use for everybody because it's shared across the network. The good thing that network technicians like is that they can actually monitor your activity. So if you are up to things that you shouldn't be, the network technicians can actually monitor it and catch you. You're able to actually add security features to the network. And the good thing is your network technicians, instead of having to install on every single computer, they can just pr push a button and generally roll out all of those files and updates at once rather than having to spend ages updating one at a time. So there are two main types of network. You have a wide area network and a local area network. Now the difference between the two is that a wide area network covers a large geographical area. A local area network covers a small geographical area. What I mean by a small geographical area is that a local area network may be used in somewhere small like a school or in offices, whereas a wide area network you're more likely to see across banks where you need to connect two different campuses or two different sites together. Hi everyone, this is Madeload458. And this video is done for my school project about the local area network. Local area network is a computer network that connects computers within the limited area, such as home, school, or office building. The terms LAN and WAN are often mixed, and on this picture we can see the difference. The LAN would be just one house with uh, PCs inside of it connected to each other and the van would be many of those houses that are geographically far apart but again all connected to each other they would form a wide area network the main standard used for connecting PCs over LAN is the Ethernet and the explanation of the Ethernet can be quite complex as we can see on many of those internet websites but I'm gonna try and keep it uh, fairly simple for you just so that you can understand Simply said, uh, Ethernet is a technology which allows us to connect multiple devices to form a local area network. If you want to create your own Ethernet local area network, you'll need a CAT5 cable or the Category 5 cable. It's the main component used for creating Ethernet LANs. At the end of each Ethernet cable, there's an RJ45 plug with 8 separate wires inside, lined in the exact order. I've seen many people confuse the Ethernet cables with the standard telephone cables and in reality there's a big difference because the Ethernet cable has 8 wires whereas the telephone cable has only 4. The two other important devices for making networks are a router and a switch. The router usually connects uh, two different LANs together and exchanges data packets between them whereas the switch expands the single LAN network with various devices such as other PCs uh, gaming consoles, smart TVs, uh, servers, and a bunch of other stuff. This here is a basic LAN network with the switch being connected to the router and the router connected to the internet. There are multiple PCs connected to the switch along with the printer and the server. If for example you want to print something from this PC it would be very easy since every device connected to a LAN can exchange data with each other thus making the interaction very easy. That would be all for this video, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you want more videos like this to be made in future. So at this point you would have just watched a video and you must have a rough idea of the difference between WAN and LAN. That was a video recording that a student had made and basically a WAN covers a large geographical area whereas a LAN covers a small area. We use a WAN 
and um, we use things like cables, telephone lines, satellite, and radio waves. So that imagine you've got a a a bank branch that's in one part of the town, and then you want to connect to another part. You can use strong radio waves. So that's example of a WAN, and the biggest WAN that we know is the internet. A LAN, again, is on a small site, and we can use them in schools or home offices. Now, there are four other types of network that you will need to know for the computer science exam. You'll need to know what a PAN is, a personal area network, and that's generally when we use devices such as our mobile phone, uh, such as our tablets, and we can create a network by using these personal devices. That's simply what it is. A metropolitan area network aren't necessarily used as much as they used to anymore because of the WAN. A metropolitan area network used to allow you to connect across cities using things like satellites, but now we don't necessarily use them as much anymore because we can connect two sites or two buildings together just by using the internet and by using a WAN. A SAN is a storage area network, so thinking about where you store a large, it's a large file storage place basically, so if you want to save lots and lots and lots of files, that is what a SAN is. And many of you will know a VPN as something that some of you may have used to convince certain video websites to think that you're in another country. Well, that's not a, a, vet, a VPN actually is. It's a virtual private network. And the, the idea of it is that companies set it up so that they can have an area on their network that is locked from the general public so that people can go in there and it's kind of kept quiet. It's a private area for people to work in, really. Um, so that's what a virtual private network should be used for. Now, at this point, in my lesson, I will have given a worksheet or a task that allows your student to actually just continue with the task. Um, so give your student something to do. So now moving on, we're talking about transmission media. Now, most local area networks use copper wire. Uh, and the general reason for that is that it's fast and reliable. And think about it. It's Easy, easy to conduct electricity and what what do we use in computers we use binary which is ones and zeros which is basically powered by electronics so this type of wild wire is called an unshielded twisted pair and the reason why we use it is, is because there is minimal interference and it's flexible think about it you can move that cable and you can move it around buildings and and it's really easy to move around now, because unshielded twisted pair can only travel so long, so maybe you could do uh, 50 meters with it before it starts to drop in signal, we had to use another type of cable, which is fiber optic. Now, fiber optic can travel up to 50, up 20 to 50 miles because it just uses a light that's reflecting. And the benefit of this is that if you're going to lose any data, it's generally small and it's not subject to any interference. I will say it can have its drawbacks because it is expensive and you can break it quite easily if you don't look after it. And if you break it, then the signal can refract quite easily. Now, wireless networks are common these days. And the idea is that companies want to avoid putting cable installations all around their building. Could you imagine un how unsafe it would be if you were tripping over cables in your classroom? Now, the benefit of this is that it's really easy for me to just get, get an, 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 uh, the Wi-Fi code and just connect to a network. So visitors that come to your ha house or they come to the school can just tap into our network. Now, the problem with wire wireless networks is that it can actually be a lot slower because you're sharing the same bandwidth. So if your wireless device only accepts 50 megabytes and you've got lots of devices on it, it's going to drop how quick your internet access is or just your network in general. And the problem is that the wireless signals can be picked up. Now, there are ways to get around that and you can hide your SSID. That stops people from seeing your wireless network when they turn discovery on on their device. So you can hide this 
service set identifier. So it might say Mr. Chambers Network at home and you can hide that so people can't discover it. You can also think about the MAC address. Now every device has a MAC address on it which basically says what the hardware is. And as a network technician, you can either allow or disallow specific MAC addresses from your network. You can also use the Wi-Fi protected access encryption. So there is a code that people have to type in if they find your, your, your network. So these are some things that you can put into place to stop people from accessing your wireless network. Again, at this next point, your teacher or in my case, in my lessons, will have given out a task to help you understand it a bit more. So if you have this worksheet, go back to it, revise it, and remember the key points for your exam. Thank you for watching. I hope the video was useful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe below uh, and share it with other students so that they may do better on their computer science exams. Thank you.